Hello, today we're going to be looking at virtual machines. A while back, I had a comment on one of my videos asking how to access ports on a virtual machine. So let's say you want to set up a server, uh, a web server or an SSH server. We're going to do both today in a virtual machine. So we're going to set up a virtual Debian machine using QMU. At least that's how I pronounce it. I tried looking it up before this video, and everyone pronounces it different. But that's uh, QEMU -Q is the name of the... Uh, virtual machine application we're going to be using. VirtualBox is another popular one. I like uh, QMU because it's it's very easy to use from the shell. I don't need a GUI application. Uh, so with VirtualBox, you have that GUI application. You could probably do stuff from the shell as well. And that's great if you don't know what you're doing and you need menus for the options. But if you know what you're doing, it's just quicker to have the shell. And then you can alias or script out stuff. Uh, so you can have your server running in the background and stuff. But we're going to jump in. And I'm going to follow my notes, which I'll link to in the description of this video. So let's go ahead and just have a look. Okay, right here are my notes that should be linked to in the description of this video. First thing you're going to do, I'm running Debian on my host machine, but we're also going to set up a Debian virtual machine. And again, we're using QMU, and the package has changed names over the years, but we're using QMU system. Once that's installed, so sudo apt install QMU-system, if you type in QMU and hit tab a couple times, you'll see you have all these options. Let me type in system and hit tab a couple times. You can see that this virtual machine supports a lot of different architectures. We're going to go basic uh, x86 64-bit processor, but you have different types of MIPS processors, ARM processors of different types, and even if you're running a 32-bit system, you have the i386 here. So you can, and PowerPC, you can virtualize a PowerPC amongst other uh, architectures that I'm not even familiar with, right? So again, that's sudo apt install uh, qmu-system. There's other packages and tools that can go along with it, but I think that's all you need to get these applications installed. And again, we're going to be using qmu x86 next. Now, we could create our own Debian uh, image, but Debian already provides you with one. So if you go to the Debian download page, you'll see here, uh, use Debian cloud image. If we can look down here, there's already a QMU image. You can get the uh, QCow is how I would say that, QCow2 or a RAW. Uh, and either one will be fine. I'm assuming the RAW is just you know a RAW image, which is basically just a file with all the files in it, <laughs> if that makes any sense, uh, as if you were to like clone an actual hard drive, where QCow2 uh, uh, is specifically designed, I believe, for QMU. At least that was always my uh, impression, since it starts with a Q. Nice thing about this, I don't know much about the differences, but uh, this type, you can create, and in a future video, we might create our own image, but you can create a five gig image, but it won't take up five gigs of space until you fill it up. Anyway, you can right click and copy or just say download. I'm just going to copy from my notes, that particular one. I'm in a empty directory here, so I'm just gonna wget and download that. It's like 350 megabytes, so it won't take long to download. Once it's downloaded, we're gonna run this command. We're gonna say QMU uh, system x86 64 because it is a 64-bit image. If you downloaded an ARM image, which they do provide here, so if you wanted to, uh, let's see, right here, PowerPC and ARM. So if you download an ARM, you would do an ARM system, but we're just going AMD Intel uh, x86. So we're gonna say, yeah, we're gonna use enable KMV, which you don't have to do, but if you have your kernel set up properly, that will allow you to use uh, hardware rendering so it just will make things run faster. What we're doing, it doesn't really matter, but I always like to throw that in there. We're gonna say use one gig of our RAM as memory for this machine. Again, it's a server, one gig is plenty. And then we're gonna say HDA, that's saying the first hard drive is going to be that image. Okay, in fact, let's just run that. We're gonna leave off this last part at first. So I'm gonna run that, and again, this is the name of the image we just downloaded. I'll go ahead and hit enter, and we pop up this window, and you will see that it will boot right into Debian here for us. And uh, currently it's, you know, uh, Linux 6.1.0-18 AMD 64. It's loading the initial RAM disk. So it's booting just like it would on a physical machine, but here in the virtual QMU environment. This should only take a couple of seconds. There we go. Now, in a moment, we'll get the login prompt. By default, the user is root and there's no password. Obviously, if you're gonna actually use as a server, you're gonna to wanna to set a password, but we'll just type root and hit enter and we're logged in, okay? Now, going back to my notes, there are a few things we wanna do. We wanna apt update to update our packages. And then after that, I'm going to apt install two packages. I'm going to apt install G, uh, GPM 
and Nmap. Nmap's just gonna allow us to scan our ports just to make sure things are set up properly. We will continue. What is uh, G GPM? I've talked about this in the past. This is not a GUI interface. So if I wanted to select text on the screen, I don't have a mouse cursor like I would in a terminal if we were running a full desktop. Uh, GPM, once that's loaded, look, I have a little cursor here. I run this on my main machine so that before I log into the GUI interface or if I'm, I'm stuck at one of the TTYs, I can select and copy text just by you know highlighting and then center clicking will paste what you highlighted. I find it very useful. We may or may not use that in tutorial, but I always do that whenever I don't have a GUI interface. Okay, so Nmap, local host will scan our local machine. We have no ports open. Now, if I try to sudo apt install, uh, open SSH server because we want to install an SSH server. It's going to tell me that it's already installed. I'm sure there's a way to start it up. I find the easiest thing to do here is just say reinstall. It's going to uh, make sure the package is up to date. I'm just going to click enter on keep the local version currently installed, but now it will generate the keys that I need and it will restart the service for me. And if I nmap local host again, you can now see port 22 is open. And let's now add a user. So if you look at my notes, I have notes on all of this. We have add user and whatever you want to name it. I'm going to say add user. I'll just call it user. I'm going to give it a password. Type it in twice. Just hit enter to get through all that. Now we've added a user. Uh, we should be able to SSH in. But I, I, now we have SSH set up. By default on Debian, it has passwords disabled. You have to use keys. I'm not going to generate keys in this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our SS, uh, SSH daemon, the daemon, the server file, the configuration file for that, and make a change. So I'm going to say vim, because vim is installed by default, and I'm going to say SSH, SSH D, make sure you do the D underscore config, otherwise you're editing the client, not the server, and I'm going to look for password, the capital P, and I'm going to change this to Yes. Now, a lot of people frown upon that. Again, I'm just doing it here because I'm not going to go through generating uh, keys and sharing them in this video. Uh, at this point, we need to etc init d or dot d ssh restart. That will restart our server. Now, I should be able to ssh uh, as that user at localhost. Again, I couldn't. I can't ssh in as root uh, right now. Uh, one, because I don't have a password or keys set up, but also I, I'm not sure in that config file, uh, lots of times root will be disabled by default anyway on SSH login. But I do that, I'm going to say yes, and now I type in that password I created for that user we just created, and I'm now logged in. But I did that back to the local machine. We want to be able to access that outside of this virtual machine. Now, the way we would do that is we will SSH to our physical machine, but we're going to do some port forwarding. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to lock log out of that SSH instance, and now I'm going to power off our virtual machine. So going back to my notes, we're now going to add to that same command this little option, okay? So run that same command, but we're adding dash nick space user. Let me reset this, make sure everything is displaying properly. Yeah. Uh, dash nick user comma host fwd let me shrink this down so it's on one line uh, at least this part so we're host forwarding any tcp traffic and we're going from on our physical machine port 5022 to the virtual machines 2022 now we have some uh, colons here and dashes again this is all linked in the description of this video uh, but once we run this as such and allow the virtual machine to boot, what I'm going to do is open up another terminal. So here I am on my host machine here on the left in the bottom box. Once my virtual machine is booted, I should be able to SSH, give it the user. I'm going to say localhost, but if I was remotely connecting, it would be the IP address or the domain name. And I got to say port 5022, because that's just what I set up for the port forwarding. And this will go to port 22 on the virtual machine. Let's go ahead and hit enter. It's my first time connecting, so I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to type in my super secret password. I am now logged in onto the virtual machine from my physical machine. And again, I'm doing it locally, but it would work remotely. You would just have to put in that IP address or domain name. 
and if I nmap localhost, you will see that we have port 22 running, but we were connecting to it through port 5022 on the physical machine. Now, let's go ahead and set up a web server. So I'm going to uh, log out of here. I'm going to come back over here to the virtual machine, and I'm going to type in root once again. I'm going to apt install Apache, 3, or Apache 2. And hit yes there. Now once that's installed, give it a moment. I'm going to go to my web browser right here and I'm going to say localhost. And if I just do localhost, this is looking at my current physical machine. If I do colon 5080 is what I'm going to set up the port to and you can see I can't access it now. And again, localhost is just because I'm connecting back to this machine, but remotely you put in the IP address or domain name. So let's go ahead and power off our virtual machine. And right here, we're just going to change this to 80. So 50, 80, and 80. We're going to allow it to boot once more. Again, we still haven't set up a root password, and you will want to do this if you're actually going to use this in production. Uh, but when we get to the login screen, root. And now, actually, I don't even need to log in. I should be able to come back to my web browser here and hit enter. And look, I'm looking at the web host, the web server on the virtual machine. We can test this out by using vim and var www.html index.html, and we'll look for Apache. Right here, we're going to say, hello world. Save that, and if we refresh this, you can see it says hello world. So I am looking at my virtual machine. Now, what if you want to have your SSH server and your web server both running together? Well, that's easy enough. Let's go ahead and I'll just kill the server there. Uh, so we have our host forward, and we have this. We're just gonna copy that with the comma there. So we're gonna say, okay, now, also forward F22 or F22 5022 to port 22 and now we can run this we can once we get to the login prompt we don't even have to log in because those both those services are going to run in the background now if I come to my shell down here again SSH that user the IP address and then port 5022 and by I'm just using 5022 it can be whatever you want you can make 222 as, lo as long as you have permission to access those ports on your host machine and they're not being used. Uh, so higher ports would be better unless you're a root user. Uh, so I'm gonna run this and I'm gonna log in and we're logged into that virtual machine now. And if I come over here, I can refresh this and you can see that the web host is still running. So we can also look at, I have one other thing to add into this and that is this no graphic option. Now, I'm running this as a server. I don't have Xorg or a GUI interface running over here, so I'm gonna kill my virtual machine. Oops, I just killed my shell, but that's okay, because I'm using Tmux, so everything's still running. We can run this same command right here, but add dash no graphic, right? Now, when we run that, let's go ahead and close this bottom, or at least make this full screen. It's running without that QMU GUI interface. It's running it in my shell here because I don't need that GUI interface. I don't have a graphical desktop going. I'm just doing shell stuff. We're gonna let this run. And uh, so now you can start this up, this virtual machine, as a startup process. You can have the command we just typed, either alias or in a script, and just tell it to start at boot. And you will have a server running in a virtual machine whenever you start up this machine, which is great because then if there's a, a security flaw in that uh, image, it's in a virtual machine. You don't have to worry about them getting out to your main system, in theory. Uh, now, I do notice when I get to this point, it, it looks like it's still waiting for the login screen. Go ahead and hit enter. It's there, it was just kind of didn't update the screen, but now I can log in as root and do whatever. And I'm doing all this in the virtual machine without that graphical interface. And uh, yeah, so now you have that image. You can, you can take snapshots of that image and everything's contained to that virtual machine's uh, wall, you know, the, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Sandbox, that's the word I'm looking for.
Uh, yeah, I hope you found this useful. Again, uh, my website's filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. If you like my videos and enjoy my tutorials and find them useful, you can always support me. Go to filmsbychris.com. Chris with a K, link in the description, and click on the support section. There's multiple ways you can support me financially. If not, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And again, these notes with everything we just went over uh, are up on Pastebin. I will link to them in the description of this video. But I do hope that you found this useful. Uh, and that's it. I, if you want, I can do more on QMU in the future, creating your own images and booting stuff. Uh, you know, doing your own installs and stuff like that. Whatever. Let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.